Thank you very much for watching our webinars. I hope you like it. So my company, Wapi, is creating all of this and I'll take my chance and tell you a little bit more about Wapi. If you're selling something, for example, you're selling wonderful sunglasses, you live in Italy and the Italian market is full of your sunglasses and everybody is very happy. So now you want to go global, you want to go international. So what you need? You need to find the right sales channel and then you need to send all these products to your customers. That's where Wapi comes in. We have integrated a huge amount of sales channels. We have a huge amount of partners, service providers in Ecom that will help you to expand to any country where you want. Send us an email, ask your question. Our key account manager will help you to grow your business to a new level. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you that you subscribe and stay tuned. Good luck. Hi, everybody. It's Wapi Webinars again with you. My name is Alexander Friedman and with me today is wonderful guest, Alex Chernenko. Hi, Alex. Hi, everyone. Alexander, thank you for having me. It's glad to be back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for those who are uh, uh, watching our webinars already for several years, you can find there that this is not our first webinar with Alex. So I'm very, very happy to see you again with us. Likewise, it's been it's been more than a year, I think. Yeah, probably. Time is running very, very fast. So uh, maybe you can share with us uh, what has happened with your company during the this period that we didn't talk to you. Uh, and I think like a year or something, some, some news share with us. Yeah, well, there's been some some good news. Uh, we've been growing and we won a number of uh, large government tenders in Ireland. So wow. I'm pleased to, to say that we are working with uh, with a lot of local government bodies, but at the same time, we continue supporting businesses. And mm -hmm. you know, the purpose of today's webinar is to educate uh, listeners about the new changes in the VET system that's coming in terms of not so good news, probably everyone has suffered as the result of Russian-Ukrainian war that has affected many businesses. And we in Ireland have witnessed uh, sanctions being applied against our previous customers. You know, we've been working closely with uh, clients of any, of any nationality, including Russia. But after the invasion, doing business with any Russian companies or individuals mm -hmm. became almost impossible. and that that had some little effect, but uh, nevertheless, yeah. the business continues to operate globally. And we now are working more with Ukrainian customers than, than the Russians, unfortunately, due to due to restrictions and sanctions. Alex, Alex just for, for those who see you for the first time, uh, Alex is CEO and founder of Ch company Churn & Co. Uh, and co-owner of e-commerce brand Causa. Can you tell just very short one, few sentences about your your company, what what you're doing? We register companies and we help with European VAT compliance tax filings. So essentially, it's a business consultancy that help that help entrepreneurs to run businesses in Europe and globally. And you're based in Ireland, right? Yeah. So as you mentioned today, our topic is VAT. Uh, the new digital age VAT system uh, that is happening in Europe. And Alex is going to tell us a little bit more about this topic. And, and I am sure everybody have to listen very carefully because it is about every, absolutely every company that is working in Europe, in e-commerce, VAT is very important. So let's let's give Alex the stage. Well, I think VAT topic is is probably something that many uh, business owners, entrepreneurs don't really enjoy because it's kind of it's it's boring to some and it's too complicated for others. But today, I'm just I would like just to maybe focus rather than on the technical side of things, more on how it's going to affect businesses and what's actually is common changes. Trying to 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 give the information in plain English. 
And and let's start with a little bit of a of a history that in 2014 European Union adopted a directive that they want to modernize the European tax system. So they kind of they made essentially an intent that hey guys let's 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 change system let's let's make something unified. And that process kind of didn't really happen for the next three years. In 2017, uh, a, a kind of a unified standard was adopted for invoices that could be used by every country. And again, for the next two years, nothing happened. And kind of in 2019, uh, the documentation and all the work that was happening behind, it finally kind of came to life. And the European Union adopted that in the next 18 months, we will be publishing something. And then kind of COVID happened in 2020. They said, listen, because it's COVID, we are postponing it for another 30 months. And just in December 2022, they actually said what they're planning to do. So can you imagine between 2014 until December 2022, nothing really was announced much to the public. But now finally, they said that we would like to modernize the ET system. And the whole idea is instead of every European country to be doing their own system, they would like to create one unified system for every country. And those changes are already started to happen. And the big, the biggest and the first portion of it will commence on January 2014. Uh, maybe just to give an idea what the change affects. It mainly affects the businesses that are working with governments in the European Union. So essentially, if somebody has a contract or a tender, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, if if you are doing business with any government in Europe or planning, you essentially will have to be using a system to be sending invoices to the government. So that's kind of the first change. Uh, second change, it will be mandatory from 1st of January 2028 also to send this new type of invoices and using this unique system if you are doing business with other businesses in the European Union. So let's say if you know if I'm based in Ireland and you're based in Latvia and I'm invoicing you, I no we, we no longer will be essentially transacting directly. We will be mm -hmm. logging into some portal. I will be sending invoice, and that invoice will get approved by a system before you can mm -hmm. actually pay it. So it adds that extra level of control and transparency that there is no no more doing things in the backdating stuff that you, you you will no longer be able to kind of change invoice or issue it after the payment, you know, and that's, that's kind of the, the main and probably biggest changes that the businesses will have now kind of four years to get ready for that system. And it starts with the government and it starts with large contracts that, uh, that happen, but the small businesses will not really be affected until 2028. But what the European Union has done, they allowed countries to do it earlier than 2028. And some countries actually yeah. have done it already. Like Italy has joined the system. Poland has joined the system already. France is joined it already in 2014, 2024. So, so what we now see that the European Union said mandatory in the next four years. But if you like, you can start earlier. And European countries are actually starting it. So it will but be so affecting it, it is It is about a new invoice system or it is about new VAT system? It's about... Uh, reporting VAT and invoice. So essentially, every European country, you know, has has their own time when you have to declare VAT, and it has its own process how to do it. So the idea mm -hmm. is that it's not just sending invoices uh, in in one format that every European country will use. It's also declaring and paying VAT. So it's one mm -hmm. process in every country that's going to make life of businesses easier. Instead of having an accountant in Poland, in Latvia, in Ireland. There will be essentially one way to report, file, and pay VAT for the whole European Union, irrespective. So that's that's kind of another. So we, but but we still we will continue to pay VAT to the local government, or we'll start to pay it to Brussels. It will be a unified system. I, I'm not sure how exactly they're gonna do the split, but the whole idea is that everybody everybody will get access to it, and every country will essentially take the payment or any sales or business that was conducted in that country. Okay. So, but uh, the, the, the main change for uh, the businesses, the e-com sellers, for example. The main changes, 
is that there will be essentially one way to issue invoices to other businesses, one mm -hmm. way to pay, one way to file and report. So that will, you know, businesses that, for example, are in e-commerce and they have multiple warehouses, one in Germany, one in Poland, yeah. they have to have accountants in every country. They have to file separate tax declarations to every uh, country where they have stock. And on top of that, they have to do another one-stop shop report for the VAT. So that puts a lot mm -hmm. of pressure on kind of businesses uh, and essentially costs to pay accountants, bookkeep, little tax professionals are quite high. The idea is that that will become redundant over the next four years, that the businesses will be able to report through one system and they can do it from their own country without, without the need. So this is kind of one change that's already been implemented. But uh, uh, more changes are coming this year uh, and the deadline would be again by the end of 2023. The European Union will be deciding on a single VAT registration for the whole European Union. So wow. this, this hasn't been finalized yet. They've given us a deadline that it's going to be decided and finalized by the end of this year. So it's just one VAT number for the whole European Union. That's, that's what they're hoping to present. But when that will become effective, uh, will it also be part of 2028 or will it be a little bit further? Uh, we don't know yet, but that's that's the idea. So it's, it's you know, registering for one VAT number in one country and using that one number just to file everywhere else. Everywhere. That, that's that's kind of the best scenario and best news that small businesses could, could have. But that's going to be probably four years or more before it finally happens. Okay. And what's uh, e-invoicing? What does it stand for? This new procedure, how to issue an invoice? Yeah, that's essentially electronic invoicing, and it's the system that kind of runs on the back of software that will be connected to a central database of all the tax authorities in uh, in the European Union. And the idea behind it, it is just a structured electronic invoice. I mean, they, uh, at the moment, they announced three formats, PDF, that most of you know people probably mm -hmm. use, but the, the second one is UBL. And the one that they expect to be using the most is called XML format. So it's essentially, it's like a programmable invoice with specific fields. And again, mm -hmm. they're doing it for the purpose that everybody uses the same format, that when one invoice is issued, it has all the necessary fields because many businesses, believe it or not, still do mistakes when they issue invoices to each other. And that creates mm -hmm. com complications for themselves. It creates complications for the tax authorities. And then tax authorities lose a lot of money as the result for businesses not paying VAT. So the biggest driver is yeah. uh, is probably VAT collection across Europe. That's why they're driving this. They want to see everything that happens. They want to control every single transaction and they want to approve an invoice before it's issued. But there is some also benefits to the yeah. businesses. It's like yeah, I just want to, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think? What are the good and bad things about this e-invoicing? Well, the, the the good things is going to be that uh, once things are approved, it's very easy to to proceed. Uh, and, you know, we work with so many different clients. Like we now have cases where a client purchased equipment from another, another country and mm -hmm. their supplier declared wrong information in the VET return. Okay. And we had to work with three different tax authorities. Irish tax authorities, Spanish tax authorities, and there was another European country involved. And it's been going on for nine months, and it's still unresolved. So different tax authorities cannot basically agree between each other. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, they said, your supplier needs to change the invoice. But supplier said, listen, I'm not going to do anything. I already filed my declaration. So how do you get out of that situation where three countries involved you have a supplier, you have clients, something happened in the past, somebody did a mistake. That takes yeah. a lot of time of accountant, tax inspectors, you know, and the clients themselves trying to fix it and it's still not fixed. So that problem will be gone, that, you know, everything will be transparent mm -hmm. and straightforward. Also, uh, the good news is that it will prevent a lot of fraud. So let's say sometimes we had instances, again, with a couple of clients. You, you would say you're a business that works for so many years and then you you get an invoice from somebody you worked with and they tell you listen i changed my bank details you know can you mm -hmm. pay me here 
and you go and pay. And then two weeks later, you realize that actually it was a scammer. They just accessed an email of one of your suppliers, put their yeah. own bank accounts, sent invoice. You 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 trusted that that client that supplier, so you just paid. How are you going to get your money back? So preventing the fraud by businesses uh, and essentially making one unique standard and reducing costs of, of running, that's that's some of the benefits that, that we will see. But the biggest one will be when everything will be done under single VET. But that's that's a little bit further down the line, I think. Yeah, totally. It, I, I, it sounds like uh, already one country if there is one point that is collecting all the taxes and then distributing it among all, or all the other countries in the union, it is some yeah. sort of it's some sort of the way towards uh, like making this as one big country. it's it's not how it's gonna work. So uh, the structured invoice, one of the benefits of it is that it already has payment details. So when you mm -hmm. create an invoice in the system, the payment details will already be embedded. So the whole idea is the payments actually happen automatically. Once you kind of authorize it on the system and you link your yeah. bank account, uh, basically payments could happen automatically. So the whole idea is when it comes to tax payments, it's going to be the same process. You just basically, you know, you have to pay a certain amount mm -hmm. of taxes. You go to the system, you click approve, and the money will be taken from your bank. But you don't need to do those. So it actually will save time also making payments. You don't need to go to your bank, create a specific supplier or a couple of suppliers, pay a little bit here, a little bit there. You know, the whole idea is that it's going to also streamline the payment process for the businesses. Mm. And because it's European Union, they will put a lot of effort in security that obviously if they link to the bank accounts, you will, you will need to be approved first. They need to be a business bank. It's not just, you, you can't use the system to kind of do transactions with individuals. That's not intention. Mm -hmm. the, the intention is only starting with the government and then expanding it to the businesses. And what are the bad sides of this thing? How do, what, what is your opinion? Bad sides? Well, small businesses sometimes uh, sometimes take a lot of time to negotiate. So let's say you negotiate with your supplier and then you issue invoice and supplier sometimes pays or doesn't pay and then you have to cancel the invoice. So if 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 you're using the system and then something has to change, you have to kind of go back and remove it from the system. So, so kind of there will be no possibility for businesses to change things last minute and to backdate mm -hmm. stuff. Well, so let's say you paid somebody money uh, for specific stock. And then a week later, you say, listen, actually, can you change those units for those type of units? Yeah. Now it's kind of easier because businesses do directly with each other. Mm -hmm. But once it goes to the system, changing something or altering it after approval will be a little bit messy. Uh, and uh, yeah. fraudsters who have been avoiding paying VT, they no longer we we be able to do it. So of course, mm -hmm. it will kind of create more VT collection for the European Union. And of course, businesses who have been able to use, let's say, loopholes in the VET system to some level, they will no longer be able to use those loopholes and tax mm -hmm. will have to be paid on every single transaction. And what do you think, how, uh, how to prepare for this uh, change in, in the system? What, what companies should do, learn, uh, again, how to how to be prepared, how to get ready for the changes? Well, it, dep it depends where the companies are based because some countries have already been moving forward. For example, Italy has joined invoicing since 2019. Uh, France is joining in 2024. Portugal, for example, uh, again, uh, and uh, entered the system in January this year. They added the kind of unique document code to every invoice and the use of QR codes as well. So countries already kind of started doing their own their own work. And again, I, I repeated that the mandatory filing is from 1st of January 2028, but European countries have basically their own right to do it faster. And we see European countries started doing it. Like in Poland, uh, the system is voluntary until December 31st, 
but from January mm -hmm. 2024, the system in Poland becomes mandatory. Again, so Poland mm -hmm. is moving faster. Uh, Belgium already introduced a mandatory system for businesses that do more than 9 million, for example. You know, uh, France will be switching to uh, mandatory business from July 2024, and they have their call system. So, so basically, depending on where the businesses are located, they have to see what their governments are doing. Because, as, as I mentioned, some uh, European countries are moving faster. In terms of what to pre what what uh, what needs to happen, uh, there is already uh, seven compliant invoice and solutions deployed. So basically, there is already uh, solutions that are available to businesses that they could just uh, essentially go like KPMG has one of them. There is already seven of them, uh, and more are being added. So, for example, if you are using QuickBooks, QuickBooks doesn't have it yet, but we expect mm -hmm. that by twenty twenty eight they will uh, release, for example. A version that's compatible. 27 countries already deployed business to government European solutions. So it's actually done by the government and on, on their level. So they already basically developed, purchased, acquired, and made the system available for businesses that transact with the government. Uh, European Union also issued more than 11 million in funding to support kind of the development of this solutions. So businesses don't really need to develop anything themselves. They either go to their local uh, uh, tax authority and see what's, mm -hmm. what's the current kind of trend, talk to their local consultant and see that what's wh when it's going to be mandatory in my country and when it's going to be mandatory in the country where I do business with. That's that's the two so main important where, where Where to go? For example, I'm in Latvia. Where to go? Well, you you, you should you should need to go to your either tax authority or your local tax expert who will tell you mm -hmm. that Latvia plans to introduce this and this on this date. And if you're transacting with, let's say, another country, you also need to be registered on their system. The whole idea is that the uh, European Union doesn't want, for example, Latvian business to be registered on Polish system. So the idea mm -hmm. is that uh, countries kind of make their own businesses to register with them but at the end of the day it's going to be a transaction through your local tax authority because you know for example you in latvia don't speak polish so what's the point in forcing mm -hmm. you to join some new system in poland that that is actually counterproductive and they don't want to do it yeah so, if so, i need to if i need to be registered in 27 systems like yeah so the what, idea is what, that what is the idea you you need to you need to be registered through your local system uh, through mm -hmm. the, that unified portal. And that portal will then be talking to the other uh, tax authorities. That's that's the idea. But uh, what businesses should be doing right now is essentially keeping up with what the countries are doing because a lot of changes will be happening by the end of this year and starting from January next year. And most of the countries are actually making a choice to enforce mandatory registration before 2028. And but how it will work uh, when... Like Poland made it mandatory on January twenty four, and Latvia has not. So to to trade with Poland, it means that Latvian business also is no like, like in Lat the Latvian situation Pol that it is mandatory to work. Otherwise, I can't uh, uh, pay the invoice to Polish companies. No, no, the idea is that Polish companies who trade with businesses outside of. Poland, yeah. For example, so if a Polish company trades with Latvia, they have to notify the local uh, tax authority that this is the invoice they intend to be sending, let's say, to mm -hmm. somebody in Latvia. So basically, they have to inform and provide additional details to their local tax authorities. But you don't need to do anything on, on top okay. of what on top of your what you're already doing. So think okay. of it this way: they're like testing the system locally. Uh, and at the same time, they're replacing their current VAT reporting. So the way the VAT has been reported up until now, where businesses basically do everything in, in their own system and then just given the final numbers. That's how it mm -hmm. used to be. So maybe trying to understand it is that before we, we just did something in our own computers mm -hmm. and then filed the numbers that we believed are true to the tax authorities. Now mm -hmm. tax authorities will be seeing what we're actually doing on mm -hmm. a business-to-business -business scale throughout the year. 
and the VAT from those transactions will become automatic. So businesses will only kind of need to be reporting on individual sales on top of that. And as you know, individual sales are now reported by marketplaces. So it's kind of, mm-hmm. so it's kind of, you know, interesting that the idea is that a lot of things will be automatically reported, automatically filed, and you only do like a little part. I and- hope, I, I hope uh, in result, they will take the money from our bank account, not at the moment when they need it, but when we can pay it. Otherwise they will kill some big part of the businesses just taking cash from the bank account in the moment where when it was not possible to do it yeah well you know any, any automatic payments will have to be approved by whoever is submitting the return but like now they're enforcing if, if you if you did if you if you transacted with another let's say business partner in another european country you have three days to report it so the way they did it it used to be two months and with mm-hmm. this new system they've been reducing, 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 and some countries, they already allow maximum of three days. So if you transact it, you have three days to basically give the details to the tax authorities. Now, now it's going to be the other way around. You have to kind of submit the invoice three days before you intend in to advance. Contract. So basically you, you first get approval. You say, can I, can I buy this from that country or can I sell this to another country? And they say, yes, you can. And then you basically go and proceed to that. That's kind of where it's headed unfortunately so you have like you have to ask uh big brother <laughs> that you know i'll be buying this i'll be selling this and this i think system... I, I think there will be so many additional things to improve there for example i buy uh i ask can i buy from alex i don't know what 1000 uh, tables and 1000 chairs uh, and then you send it to me, I buy it, you send it to me, and there is 980 tables and, and not, not enough shares or more shares. What we will do, go again to the system and change the invoice. You will send me the second invoice. There. They will have like thousands of uh, issues to fix. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, 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 no, nobody has an answer to that. How exactly kind of changes and alterations will happen? That's that's probably the biggest the biggest challenge that the system will have to be going through. Because you know, you, you you plan to do one thing, but then last minute something happens, and and in business it does happen. But the idea is that no. yeah, it's going to be real time reporting, so they will see everything that that's, that's happened, and and there will be a process for changes. So you know, it, it shouldn't be rocket science because now it's essentially some businesses started testing the system already this year some businesses some countries are joining next year so they will have kind of really four years to do all the trial and error you know all mm-hmm. the countries are testing learning from their mistakes fighting the feedback so by the end when in january 2028 this becomes mandatory for every country some countries already will have a lot of case cases where they can say this worked, this doesn't, we need to change it. So the businesses just have to see what others are doing. Yeah. So in this situation, what would you suggest to be in the front line of testers of the system or to sit calm and wait until everybody will make their mistakes and you will learn from the <laughs> from the mistakes of others? Well, you know, when when it comes to something new, there is always uh, kind of innovators, people who just jump on anything, e- even even before something is in alpha or beta stage, they already say it, they do it. Then we have like early adopters who, who kind of want something is in the beta stage. They say, yeah, give it to mm-hmm. me. And then there are kind of la- la- late adopters who kind of see when the early adopters already, there is s- some, some quantity of them. And then there is laggers like, Finally, who, who are the last ones to join? I intended <laughs> to be kind of the third one. So I really like the system yeah. to be working smoothly before I implement it, but I like testing things. So in in, in, a, in our case, uh, I would I would kind of wait until two or three countries have done it for two years, then mm-hmm. start playing with it ourselves. When, when there is already a, a good solution available and you can just essentially play with it. Okay, so I, I, I think you have uh, 
uh, researched uh, a lot about this story. So maybe something more for uh, the companies, like what challenges uh, stand in front of them. Uh, okay, they understood that they have to find the local authority and ask when it will happen. Uh, maybe something more. What 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 you can, how you can help everybody now. Uh, what you have found? Well, uh, myself, uh, I am uh, attending a lot of webinars, and actually, uh, European Commission has done 41 webinars themselves. So they wow. understand that this is like, this is a, you know, a very difficult topic. It's, it's changing a lot of things. So European Union is actually educating businesses and creating content themselves. So, you know, instead mm -hmm. of going to, uh, let's say somebody who watched five webinars and record their own webinar, there is also possibility to just go to the European Commission and see the information first source. And actually follow okay. their, their webinars and see is this applicable. You, you will you will share it with us so we can write it down under the video. Yeah, I can give you the link and okay. it will be available under this uh, video. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Uh, likewise, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to digest the official information. So talking to the likes of uh, VAT consultants and we, uh, myself, I would like to extend to your audience. An offer that we will we 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 can provide a free consultation essentially in relation to VET. Uh, if a business mm -hmm. already is trading with governments, if the business is currently being affected by this change, and they are either uh, looking to start using the system, or they've been told that they need to start using it, and they basically don't know where to start, they could they could essentially fill in the form, uh, and one of our tax advisors will be actually giving them the best. Uh, outcome specifically for their own cases uh, at the moment it's just education uh, if you're based in poland or france or portugal countries where changes already happened or about to happen then of course the, the you know talk to your local accountant and, and your tax attorney and just make sure that you are not behind yeah maybe maybe you know some uh, uh, i don't know facebook groups uh, reddit uh wall or is there some some place where to read where where people communicate about this topic maybe you can share actually, it also with the with... actually this this is a little bit frustrating because it's new there is not that many experts uh or are essentially consultants who would be given a lot of information the majority this, this seems to be because it's uh, the first the first changes were in relation to business to government so as mm -hmm. you probably would expect the big accounting firms like KPMG, they would have uh, expertise in this, uh, but typically small businesses wouldn't be going to the top, you know, top uh, accounting yeah. and audit firms because, you know, sometimes they're not affordable, sometimes it's too early for them. So the idea is that if you, if you go online now and try to search information, it mainly comes to the big audit accounting firms uh, mm. or it's the European Commission themselves. And then you can find a couple of interesting, like we, uh, I, I found a couple of uh, two Romanian bloggers who are actually been starting mm -hmm. doing content on this. And there is a couple of Indian accountants, interesting. So there is like a Romanian and Indian uh, accountants <laughs> who actually talked on this subject. I don't know how it happened, but it's actually an in, in, in interesting. So those are the two kind of private uh, individuals yeah. that are actually talking about this. And the, the majority of the content is actually large accounting audit firms that for small businesses would be not fully applicable. So there is not much knowledge out there except the official knowledge that that businesses could, could research themselves. Okay. So uh, the only way to find information uh, that is the information that is worth some, something is to go to the local tax auditors and local uh, authorities that can help you. Like from what I hear from Alex, it's not, not the best way just to search in internet uh, for the info. Well, the European Commission website has a lot of good good content on this subject. So researching mm -hmm. it, and I think we, we, could, we could put under, uh, under this video, we could put a couple of official links so that people could actually mm -hmm. start browsing. 
Now, uh, one more point I would like to mention that countries outside of European Union started also adopting similar approach, like uh, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia. Uh, already from January 23, they actually did mandatory invoicing for, for kind of businesses that have more than 300 billion SAR. Uh, but from July of this year, smaller businesses that have only half a million of billion SAR, they, they also have to go on the system. So what we now see that everybody kind of liked this approach of, you know, one invoice format, one system to file. Uh, and once European Union kind of adopted it and created those solutions, other countries started watching and said, why don't we do the same thing? Because we, we have mm-hmm. a mess in our system. Let's let's use what European Union is doing also in our countries. And uh, UK hasn't really announced what they will be doing, but it's ex- expected that UK will also follow the European invoice and the digital VTH. So can I, we can now project and predict mm-hmm. That once European system is working and it's running smoothly, uh, other countries will follow because it's it's gonna you know from the way it sounds if if it's gonna work exactly as they say it will work, it will actually yeah. be a good thing. And will it somehow affect the customers, the final customers? Uh, the individuals, no. The idea is that it's not gonna affect uh, individuals, not in any single way, uh, simply mm-hmm. because. It's mainly relating to businesses. And individuals are already reporting VAT through marketplaces, especially commerce sellers. But if I'm sellers. if I'm buying something big, like, I don't know, kitchen, they're usually making an invoice. So will they also make this invoice in some system and uh, like a customer will have to go to a system to, to receive this the expectations, invoice? Expectations, yes. They, they, <laughs> they say that it's not, the B2C is not addressed in the invoice and building block at the moment, and that's the official information. But mm-hmm. uh, again, we could guess that once the B2B model is fully up and running, that individuals, instead of using kind of customs declaration port, they may, it, it will be like an add-on solution to the existing customs declarations. Yeah, probably and, they will sell it to customers like, hey guys, you will have one uh, portal for all the invoices from all the companies. You will not receive them like everywhere in, in WhatsApp, in email, anywhere you will have like invoices.com and you will get all the invoices there and you'll have possibilities to pay probably customers will will say let's go and then the european government will see everything transparent all over the countries what's happening yeah the expectations is at the end of the day everything will become transparent and, and and visible now uh to answer your question is there is any changes that will affect individuals yes so as part of this digital VAT reform that's coming, one of the next changes, apart from invoices, is actually mm-hmm. making changing rules in relation to VET for passengers of transport and short-term accommodation. So Uber users, Airbnb users, uh, mm-hmm. they used to be kind of, you know, paying directly to the marketplace, but typically there is no VET declared or sometimes... Uh, VAT was not paid. So let's say if, if you are a small small apartment owner and, mm-hmm. and you rent your place, you're not VAT registered, you have basically tourist comments from all over the world. You just mm-hmm. use Airbnb website to rent your accommodation. Well, the change that is coming under this big digital VAT reform is that mm-hmm. transport companies like Uber, uh, Bolt and everybody else and websites like Airbnb will now be doing exactly the same thing what Amazon is doing, collecting VAT. Mm. So what probably is going to happen that taxi costs and accommodation costs again will go higher because some of the businesses that were essentially renting their places did not charge VAT. And you know, how many taxi drivers you expect are VAT registered? <laughs> I don't know. Nobody. Well, le- le- less than <laughs> half. So this is one of the big changes that's going to affect individuals is that there will be VET on all the mm-hmm. rights and VET on all the accommodation. Uh, and that hasn't been the case up until now. So this is the gonna, this is the, the, the uh, another part of this digital VAT report that's kind of outside of invoice and then B2B. 
And that's going to affect a lot of people. Uh, now, they don't have exactly the date. This is just announced that it's, that it's coming. When it's coming, it's, it's, it's the, so the two things that they are not clearly defined yet is the single VET registration for the whole European Union and changes to the transport accommodation. These are the two topics that the European Commission is kind of promising to decide by the end of this year. So this is kind of the stuff that that we are currently watching out. And once we have news, I'm happy to share actually, once they decide what's going to happen, we can do another webinar actually say, this is when it's coming and what and what exactly. I think you should, I think you should make something like a Facebook wall or a Reddit wall to write there all the news what's happening on this topic because a lot of people will follow it. Yeah, we're only starting now and we, we already kind of published a couple of uh, just teasers, uh, but mm -hmm. the the whole idea is yes that we will be watching it closely, and when things will be announced, we will be sharing them with mm -hmm. our readers. Wonderful, wonderful! Thank you very much for uh, sharing this with us. So, as I understand, this is a, a long journey for all the Europeans and probably for the citizens of other countries also. Uh, the governments want to have everything very transparent and not even afterwards you would do no after we do the business but in advance before we do business uh, and this this journey will take a lot of years I, like 700 million people 27 countries it, it, it will take a lot of years and we already see it like from your first sentence that the idea has come when 2014 and today is 2023. So maybe we're somewhere in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere in 2035, we'll definitely have everything transparent. And everybody who is doing business must uh, control this situation and uh, listen, follow, uh, obey the new rules. Alexander, can I ask you a question? Yeah. In, in, from from July 2021, VET rules changed. You as yeah. a business, uh, have ha, has it affected you in a, in a, in a major way? The, the, uh, the kind of the most recent changes that uh, yeah. reduced the cost of goods for declaration, moving liability to marketplace, reducing the threshold. Like the the the, the biggest change that happened in in July 2021 has it did it affect you? Yeah. Much. You see, we, with us, it is uh, very simple. We're not a trading company. So we're not trading. We're uh, a creator of logistic services and uh, marketing agency that is helping uh, sellers to start uh, selling on the marketplaces like Allegra. And this uh, it, during this year, we're adding C-Discount, Ball, Kaufland, Emacs to our portfolio. So we're logistics aggregator and marketing agency. Uh, so the, the main the main changes has can come to the trading companies. Yes, the OSS, yeah. the new new scheme of paying the taxes. And uh, still, even with the OSS, they have to have the VAT numbers in the countries where they store uh, the goods. Uh, even though I absolutely don't understand what is the reason for this, because with the OS OSS, everybody is paying to each country, like to, to Germany, to France, and like uh, it makes additional cost and additional headache to register for the VAT in the country where you want to store the goods. Uh, if you have OSS, nobody understands it. But, but that's probably, the, the, probably they will fix it in some. Well, you see, when when something new gets gets introduced, they think of kind of all the good things, but they sometimes don't think of all the scenarios. Uh, and what happened in 2021 when the changes uh, to the VET registration, one stop shop, implemented, it 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 did something good because some businesses that were, let's say selling goods from one country to all the other ones. They just have one VT registration and then they have one stop yeah. shop to pay VT uh, and it worked. But if you had multiple warehouses, that didn't work as you suggested. So with the single VT registration, that kind of will be eradicated at some stage. So changes don't happen quickly. Like now only two years later, 
after 2021, kind of everyone is a little bit more comfortable and everything is already settled. So we're going to see something like that now from the kind of 20 to 2024 is going to be a year when, when many businesses will start rolling into this program. I mean, not businesses, countries. So countries will start rolling mm -hmm. and, and kind of by the end of 2024, we already will have a lot of data uh, and, and kind of countries will learn from the mistakes. But between... So fasten, like fasten the seat belt and get prepared. <laughs> yeah, and I think you know tax authorities they are getting a little bit greedy, uh, because you know once marketplaces started collecting VAT, they actually realized that the VAT budget of countries increased. So now mm -hmm. when Amazon, eBay, and kind of other marketplaces are collecting VAT, tax authorities made bigger pockets. So then they say, okay, where else we can get VT from? Let's now see what all the businesses are doing and we make it mandatory for them. Okay, let's make taxi drivers pay VT. Let's make small uh, apartment owners pay VT. So you see every kind of year yeah. they they add more VT collection points. And that, that's the trend that is unfortunate, yep. but but that's that's what they're doing. <laughs> It uh, this one will affect the customers <laughs> and everybody. Yeah, we, we're okay. gonna adapt. I think businesses yeah. are flexible, and uh, I I I always uh, I'm amazed when I see how businesses react to all these changes. They always find a way. They always adapt, and they still manage to make money uh, and grow their businesses, essentially, irrespective of yeah. what changes uh, the governments are implementing. The businesses are still figuring it out. This is the way of uh, development. <laughs> both both parties are working on developing the better future, <laughs> just on different sides of it. Yeah. OK, thank you very much for sharing with us uh, the information about new VAT and the invoice system in, in Europe. Maybe you can uh, give us like one short takeaway how to be successful with the new uh, digital age of VAT? Well, I think information is the king at the moment. Uh, and the, 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 maybe the first and primary takeaway that I can give to this is stay on top on, on the information. Learn before before it's too late. If, if you are a late adopter, once everybody did it and you only come into play, you will be missing out. Successful entrepreneurs, they wake up early and you know, remember like reading news, newspaper at five o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock and getting information before other people are actually waking up. In the current digital age, information is available directly. You don't need to wait for a newspaper to be printed. You, you can get access directly from official sources. So learn and educate yourself on what's coming. Uh, because once you have the information, you can make wise decisions. You know, learning, learning, and, yeah. and 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 consuming the right information. Not not TikTok movies, no, but <laughs> business information, news that's gonna affect and and using it for yeah. to grow your businesses. Be fast. Be the first to learn the new information that can affect your business. The takeaway number one. Takeaway number two. What not to do? Don't do this mistake. Never. If you want to be successful, don't do this mistake. What will be the takeaway? I think you know pro procrastinating and wasting time on 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 unuseful things. Uh, it's very there is now so much entertainment, so much pleasures, and we see people that that just especially like watching TV. Uh, like yeah. I I don't watch TV for for so long, and I'm glad that I do it because it's it's just a time killer. So, you know, on one side, consume the right information, but the opposite, you know, don't consume entertainment content that actually just fills your mind with something that's not going to bring any value to your life. Yeah, that's it. That's very important and rather difficult for a lot of people. So the third one, after we like search for the information, learn it very fast, we block all the uh, bad entertainment uh, information. We we need a third takeaway, how to be successful in life in general. What to do? 
Share it with share your secret. Secret is enjoy what you're doing. It's actually if 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 you like what you're doing, you'll be happy and there is inevitable, inevitable kind of wealth and, and joy that comes from it. Uh, and you know, we've seen I've I've seen it in, in so many different uh uh I've seen businesses who were making money, but it wasn't something that the, the kind of the person wanted to do. And at some stage, they just said, you know what, I'm going to start carving wood. You know, so a, a guy who was like, say, an IT engineer, a uh, very mm. successful programmer, but he, all his life, he, he was doing something that, that he didn't really enjoy. He was making good money. And then at the age of like 43, uh, he started carving wood. And imagine two years later, he won two championships in a row for wood carving in Ireland. Person just had wow. this talent all life, never used it. And some stage decided to do actually what he's passionate about, what he loved, which was completely different. So at the end of the day, doing something that you really like and enjoy, it's inevitably going to make you successful. Even if you think it's, it's, it's some sort of childish hobby <laughs> that could still make yeah. you money. So I would, I would suggest everybody to don't put your hobbies or desires on the shelf. Start them earlier, even if you think it's, it's, you, don't, you don't have time for them right now. Cool, wonderful. I love this one. Don't put the, your hobbies on the shelf. Enjoy what you do, love what you do, and don't waste your talent. This was a wonderful three takeaways from Alex Chernyanko. Uh, Alex, do, do you want to share something with the audience? Maybe you have something like promo code or some offer for everybody? Yeah, we're going to be posting a, a link to book a free consultation with one of our experts uh, on the field of VT. And it, it's it's not just the invoicing that we talk about. Today was an interesting topic of the new changes, but we are helping businesses to solve their VT problems, get registered, file taxes, et cetera, et cetera. So if you need any help in relation to taxes or company registration, fill in the form uh, under this video. And we look forward to seeing you again when when more news will come from about digital age and after the yeah. after the European Union decides what else they want to change. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, all the details under the video, all the contacts, all, all the links you can find it. And as always, Wapi in Wapi, we enjoy and love to help you with the logistics all over the Europe. The warehouses, fulfillment, pick, pack, and send your shipments very fast, 24, 48 hours in every country will help you to localize uh, your trading in every country. We help you to start selling on the local marketplaces. And please contact me, LinkedIn, contact, you can find my contacts also here. Contact WAPI, we will be very, very Passion, passionate and glad to help you uh, to grow your e-com business. Thank you, Alex, and hope to see you sooner than in one year time now <laughs> for yeah, our likewise. next webinar. <laughs> Thank you for having Thank me. You. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao.